Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, April 25th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the Trans-Pacific Partnership begins talks for global internet censorship. Then, hard-hitting journalism as Obama is asked about ice cream and true colors are revealed. What, you think the fact that you're Benedict Arnold is going to come out? You were spouting White House talking points three days before word for word it came out of Media Matters. You got the memo before they did, bud. We got your ass. While President Obama has begun his week-long trip to Asia, he is there, of course, to push through the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Of course, now, as we reported, the TPP will not only create another wave of outsourcing, similar to what we saw with the NAFTA agreement, it will also create an international internet police that can censor content and remove whole websites. Mega corporations are, of course, all for the power that's going to give them to censor their critics. They, of course, had over 600 corporate advisors who have helped to draft the TPP. And the TPP would also require that all countries who are involved align their laws with the agreement's copyright laws. So, of course, there are so many other areas that the TPP is going to affect. We're going to stay focused on the effects that it's going to have on the Internet today because the issue of net neutrality has been dominating the news. Specifically, the FCC is about to axe murder net neutrality. This is coming from The Guardian. Now, in January, a federal appeals court had rejected regulations that were designed to assure some measure of fairness in the way that America's internet service providers handle any information that's traveling through their networks. Now, it's not because the courts felt that customers should be able to decide what information is important to have access to, but basically the court said that the FCC just used the wrong regulatory framework for trying to impose broadband rules. So basically they just gave the FCC the opportunity to fix their mistakes and push it through a different way. And he also promised to preserve an open platform for innovation and expression. But the FCC just last night and this morning issued a clarification of that statement. They'll be fixing the open web problem by actually letting it get worse. They're going to be providing a so-called fast lane for carriers to hike fees on sites that are trying to reach customers. So you would consider an internet service provider like Time Warner Cable. Basically, they could say to Google that its YouTube videos won't reach us at, say, our gold package speed if we've already paid for the internet to reach us at that speed. They say Google, too, would have to pay for a gold standard package fee if they want their information to get to us. So in a competitive market, an internet, an internet service provider could never get away with such a thing. But of course, considering the Time Warner Comcast merger that is being maneuvered right now, it's obviously going to be a monopoly and they can do whatever they want. And they're basically letting everyone know that they're going to have to pay to play. They're going to be writing these laws. Now, The Guardian suggests obviously coming after Obama, who promised when he was running for president that he would support an open Internet. But of course, that was just another one of his big lies. But they also recommend that at the local level to push for community broadband networks. Um, these are networks that are going to be owned and operated by the public. And of course, with this big merger coming about, we're really going to need to start focusing on what we can do at the local level. And that is very good advice. Now, while we've got such threatening legislation trying to be passed that threatens the future of innovation and openness in the digital world, we've got President Obama who outright lied about protecting that. And now he is in Asia trying to push through uh, a trade agreement that would be one of the most devastating agreements globally that we have seen yet. You would think a journalist who was assigned to covering the president's trip would ask him, about these things that are going to affect the globe, especially the oh-so-important mainstream media. Well, no. When given the chance to question Obama about his trip, the AP asked Obama if he slept well. And then another reporter asked Obama if he liked the ice cream dessert that was in the shape of Mount Fuji served at the state dinner. These are the Oh, so important questions that our journalists think the world needs to know about. They don't want to ask him about what's going to happen when there is a monopoly over the Internet. 
or what is he doing in Asia, basically selling our country to the globalists? But this is why those in power continue to get away with rampant corruption, because journalists aren't doing their job. Even Hillary Clinton had something to say about it. She uh, told an audience at the University of Connecticut that journalism is now driven more by entertainment than fact-based reporting. She said, you might not learn anything, but you might be entertained. And I think that's just become an unfortunate pattern that I wish could be broken. And of course, Hillary Clinton should be careful what she wishes for because if journalists did do their job, start to do their job, we might get to the bottom of Benghazi. So she probably really doesn't actually want reporters to start asking the tough questions, especially in the lead up to 2016. But that's all part of the plan is to just keep us dumbed down to keep us placated enough so that we won't ask tough questions and that we'll just believe that there's someone out there representing us. Someone like a Glenn Beck, you know, they'll pro they try to trick people into thinking that Glenn Beck is their man, that he's the one that's for the libertarians, that he's got us covered. But we just uh, aired this on the Alex Jones show today. Glenn Beck, he's getting his talking points right from the White House and one of his top guys, Buck Sexton, is former CIA and Council on Foreign Relations. Glenn Beck is getting his information straight from the White House, totally CIA. He is a defector. Alex Jones called him a Benedict Arnold. And then he's always coming on the attack against us, and he tries to play it off like he's like, oh, what's that one website? Oh, what is it, Infowars? Like he has no idea who we are. Meanwhile, we have proof of him saying verbatim exactly what Alex Jones says, except for that he'll say it years later. And then he tries to play Alex Jones off as some crazy man because Glenn Beck was sent in to steal the libertarian movement to try to say, no, I am your savior, I am your protector. If you, you know, if you have God with you, you will stay with me, with Glenn Beck. And listen to Glenn Beck in his own words. One of our guys, one of our researchers, um, John, went to this big libertarian convention in Washington, D.C., and he wrote me all weekend long. He's like, Glenn, this is great. These people are great. And then he started in on about half these people hate your guts. And I said, for what reason? For what reason? One, two, three, five, two. Kick it. Let's make no mistake. Glenn Beck does some good. Okay, by widening the people that are aware of this stuff. The problem is at key points, key points, key points, he says global warming's real, we need new taxes, banker bailouts are good, Ron Paul is bad. He, he does enough good stuff to get your confidence. It's like rat poisons, 90% good food. Sir, I'm a dope. Blah, 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 blah. I'm a rodeo clown. Ow! I'm a recovering alcoholic. I believe so deeply in our Constitution. All efforts by the government to bail out private industry are unconstitutional. I think the bailout is the right thing to do. You know that I am actually a libertarian at heart. The $700 billion that you're hear about, hearing about now is not only, I believe, necessary, it is also not nearly enough. I didn't think I could hate victims faster than the 9-11 victims. <laughs> I wonder why I don't have any ratings. <laughs> Maybe because you're not covering anything that anybody wants to watch. Ow. We're trying. We're trying. I think the bailout is the right thing to do. A VAT tax. Uh, I was for the Patriot Act, but I am more and more a libertarian every day. <laughs> Hundreds of publications in the last year and a half kept saying, Glenn Beck is riffing off of Alex Jones. Glenn Beck is copying Alex Jones. It is this, this global government structure. We want to establish a global government system. These are a group of people that believe in global government. Because we know that there is a move towards a global government. They're bringing us into a one world government. A one world government, a new world order. And for many years I've been exposing the criminal activities of the global elite otherwise known as the New World Order. Also known as the New World Order. Also known as the New World Order. They came up with the idea of um, 
the Council of Foreign Relations. And it started something called the Council of Foreign Relations. The uh, Council of Foreign Relations. I'm here to ask you about the Council of Foreign Relations. Okay. But the Council on Foreign Relations. Um, this in my hands is yet another piece of legislation, except this is global legislation. This is uh, the Framework Convention on Climate Change from the United Nations. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. And the Fed, because that's where the money printing is happening. Printing your own money and printing up money. How much money we're printing at the Federal Reserve. Greenspan in the Federal Reserve who set the monetary policy that is now could cause a major depression. It's his fault for printing five trillion dollars. Obama announced plans for a national ID card. Having a national ID card worn around your neck is... Gephardt is now proposing is because those pushing globalism and government control on a global level have mastered the art of hiding it in plain sight. We are going to uncover the truth that has been hidden in plain sight to us. It's hidden in plain view. Little things hidden in plain view. Hidden in plain view. Hidden in plain view. They refer to it as sustainable development. Sustainability. Watch out for that word. So there you have it. Glenn Beck is a total shill. He is sent in to steal Alex Jones's audience to try to say that he is the one that represents liberty. Only Glenn Beck. You can only go to him for the truth news. Anyone can just go back and see how he covered Ron Paul leading up to the 2008 election and see that he was nobody. He was nobody for the libertarian movement until after Obama was safely in office, and then he brings Ron Paul on his show. You are a joke, Glenn Beck, and I guess apparently the gloves are off. Now, to give a little credit to some local news investigators at the KATU news station in Oregon, they did some real investigative journalism, and they uncovered some evidence suggesting that Cover Oregon officials created a fake website to create the illusion of progress for the feds to the tune of $303 million in Obamacare grants. President Obama said just last week, this thing is working. And of course, liberals got the message that they needed to continue to ignore Obamacare's ongoing dysfunctions. But here we see the reality is much different. In states like Oregon, they pulled the plug on their insurance exchange on Thursday. And then the exchange website, Cover Oregon, they still have not enrolled one person and the state spent about $7 million signing up just a mere 69,000 people by hand using paper applications. So of course now we see that uh, no one's been enrolled in the website because it's a fake website. <laughs> it's a fake website created to help Obama and his re regime there in the White House to give the illusion that this thing is going to be a success. Meanwhile, how many other states have these fake websites there to create these fake numbers to bolster the sideshow? And you know, don't forget, we haven't even seen the beast. We don't even know what's really going to happen because Obama has continued to push the mandates back until after the election. So we really haven't even seen how this is actually going to affect us. Stay tuned. Now coming up, I have got a special report that is calling out the media war machine. We've seen how the New York Times used fake photos to try and sell this war with the Ukraine, but that's not, that's not the beginning. You know, this goes way back. The media has always been there towing the line when it comes to pushing war. They are the propaganda arm of the war machine. So we're gonna just play a little video recapping just how they have uh, been caught basically faking the news in order to push the globalist agenda. And then we will peel back the curtains a little bit more on the establishment media's favorite lapdog. That would be the mob rat government operative agent provocateur Al Sharpton. It's going to be a very good uh, Darren McBreen report coming up. And we know you love watching these takedown reports. So as a Prison Planet TV subscriber, you can have instant access to all of these reports, as well as the movies, the rants, the Alex Jones show, all the nightly news. You can sign up and get a 15-day free trial as well. Once you are signed up, you can share your username and password with up to 11 people at the same time. We'll be right back.
My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Hi, I'm Shane Steiner. A lot of you have been following my progress using Super Male Vitality. The last 19 weeks has been an incredible experience. I was feeling a little down and lethargic during the holidays, and none of the supplements that I was taking were doing any good. That's when my longtime friend from high school, Alex Jones, introduced me to Super Male Vitality. I was a little skeptical at first. Not only would I have the energy to work out and go to the gym, but it, it was actually the changes were happening to my body uh, a lot more rapidly. My whole mood, my libido, everything had completely changed. The concentrated organic herbs, they stimulate your natural systems to produce the natural hormones that you need. I just really wanted to, to bulk up and hit it hard, and I went in for about the first five weeks and was lifting heavy weight and just really hitting it hard and I gained 20 pounds of muscle immediately. Since that, I've decided I was gonna lose some weight and slim down. I just changed up my workout a little bit and 35 pounds came off. Folks, this is not a joke. This is not a gimmick, it's real. Super Male Vitality, available at InfoWarsLife.com. Following two propaganda-fueled days centered around fake photos supposedly proving that Russian troops were inside the Ukraine, the New York Times has issued a retraction. Buried deep on page A9, the newspaper admits the authenticity of the photos has come under scrutiny. The establishment media and the State Department pawn these photos off as evidence. Following two propaganda-fueled days centered around fake photos supposedly proving that Russian troops were inside the Ukraine, the New York Times has issued a retraction. Buried deep on page A9, the newspaper admits the authenticity of the photos has come under scrutiny. The establishment media and the State Department pawn these photos off as evidence, despite the fact the authenticity of the photographs couldn't be independently verified. Freelance photographer Maxim Dondiuk, who worked for a Russian news magazine, told the New York Times he had taken the group photograph in Slavyansk and posted it on his Instagram account. He told the newspaper that nobody asked his permission to use the photograph. And this isn't the first time the war machine media have churned out false evidence in an effort to gear the country up for war. Last year, the BBC appeared to use stunning fakery in an effort to launch a war with Syria. This report was first released on August 29, 2013, just days before an attack on Syria seemed inevitable. The BBC claims it just so happened to be filming at a small hospital when victims of a napalm-style attack poured into that very spot. Among the medics here was a British doctor visiting for the charity Hand in Hand. I need a pause because it's just absolute chaos and carnage here. Um, we've had a massive influx of what looks like serious burns. It seems like it must be some sort of, and I'm not really sure, maybe napalm, something similar to that. Exactly one month later, Obama and crew were trying to pin the chemical weapons attack on Assad without success. So BBC airs the exact same clip, this time artificially dubbing the doctor's voice to suit the establishment's need for the chemical weapons tagline. Um, we've had a massive influx of what looked like serious burns. It uh, seems like it must be some sort of chemical weapon, I'm not really sure. In a subsequent BBC interview, 
Dr. Rola Halam complained about the UK Parliament's refusal to authorize a military strike on Syria. Interestingly, Halam's father is also on the Syrian National Council, the political body which represents opposition militants. And if this all seems familiar, well, it should. A similar disinfo tactic was used to bolster support for the war with Iraq. They took the babies out of the incubators. Took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. That was Nurse Nayira, whose tearful testimony swung the pendulum in favor of war. After the vote was safely passed, Nayira, the daughter of the Kuwaiti ambassador to Washington, admitted to making the whole story up. Nurse Nayira and those faulty claims of weapons of mass destruction weren't the only lies told to convince America a war with Iraq was necessary. CNN also did their part to play up the drama. Uh, CNN's Carl Rochelle is, is here with me, just came up. Uh, Carl, I know we can't be very specific given these restrictions, but uh, within those parameters, what did you see? Well, what I saw, I, I didn't see anything hit. I looked very, almost straight above us. There is a vapor trail coming from my right to my left, and there's a cloud of uh, something. It looks like it might have been an explosion, a cloud. Uh, a white say. It, it, <laughs> oh, I love this country so much. These false flag mass media war campaigns are so typical, in fact, there's even a movie about it. Okay, good. Put the, put the village behind her. Give me some flames. Some sound of screaming. That's good. We can link that to the press. They can downlink it on Telstar 401 Transporter 21. And this just in, a news break special report from the Albanian front. We've just received information that the young Albanian national fleeing in this video is attempting to escape terrorist reprisals in her village. Even before television was invented, mainstream media was still lined to go to war. In 1895, William Randolph Hearst of the New York Journal sent his employees to cover the Cuban revolt against Spain. Lacking anything newsworthy to report, Hearst told his employee, famed illustrator Frederick Remington, you furnish the pictures and I'll furnish the war. The establishment media continues to serve as the propaganda arm of the war machine. It is their job to file dubious reports as part of a campaign to build public consensus for ongoing interventions from Iraq and Libya to Syria and eventually Ukraine. <laughs> Boy, did I almost look stupid. <laughs> From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supplies 
worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride, it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. For a limited time, use the promo code WATER15 and get 15% off on all ProPure systems at InfoWarsStore.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Since the Obama administration took over the White House, there has been a resurgence of civil rights activist Al Sharpton, one of Barack Obama's loudest cheerleaders. The Reverend now has his own TV show on MSNBC. He has his own talk radio show, a best-selling book, and is a regular at the White House. He hangs out with Obama's aides and cabinet members, members of Congress, business executives, military leaders, and the president himself. In fact, Sharpton had a choice seat for the president's inauguration. He attended Michelle Obama's 50th birthday party and even watched the Super Bowl with the Obama family. The president has sought the man's counsel and has embraced him publicly. But what most people don't know about the Reverend Al Sharpton is that he was once a cocaine dealer who turned into an FBI informant after federal agents caught him on camera negotiating a coke deal. Rather than face criminal charges, the Reverend panicked and agreed to become a snitch for the FBI. I mean, the guy is a complete joke. He is a race pimp and just a complete fraud. It's just so perfect uh, that they're reporting this about him because I'll guarantee you he was reporting on black people. I will guarantee you. He wasn't allowed to pull the shenanigans he pulled and create the political diversions where he was acting like he was fighting the political establishment in New York without some serious backing. Last week, the smoking gun released a lengthy investigation that has uncovered remarkable details about Sharpton's past work as an informant for a joint organized crime task force comprised of FBI agents and NYPD detectives, as well as his dealings with an assortment of wise guys. Before hanging out at the White House, Sharpton surrounded himself with powerful mob bosses, mafia figures with nicknames like Benny Eggs, Baldy Dom, and The Chin. Once he was flipped by the FBI, he ratted these guys out and even helped take down the Genovese crime family, the largest mafia outfit in the country. Early this morning, North Jersey, Operation Intrepid is underway. Tommy Peewee de Phillips arrested at his home. One of 41 elected leaders and associates of the Genovese organized crime family operating in northern New Jersey that were rounded up today by New Jersey State Police. Toronto and the others are charged with running a million dollar a week racketeering operation centered in, but not limited to, the Newark area. Using bugs and a video camera, cops were able to see and record the group's daily activities, which included at times running a casino there. A grand jury has been hearing evidence against the Toronto faction and indictments are expected. While secretly working for the FBI, Al Sharpton became a well-known civil rights activist and public figure. He received widespread media attention and national recognition in the late 1980s for his role in the Tawana Brawley rape allegations. After a 15-year-old teenager claimed she was gang raped by a group of white police officers. Tawana Brawley is a 16-year-old girl whose story is the talk of New York these days. The New York State teenager who claims that she was abducted and raped by six white men. Tawana Brawley became a household name and Al Sharpton became her spokesperson. We want to show the world how low down, dogged, and callous the state of New York yes. is. The case quickly generated a national media sensation because of her age, the persons accused, and the shocking state in which Brawley was found after her alleged rape. Tawana Brawley said they left her nearly dead, a gang of white men who raped her and scrawled racial epithets on her body. A hideous story, and all this year, her family and her advisors have embellished it and refused to cooperate with an investigation they say is a cover-up. But it wasn't long before a grand jury determined that the entire story was a hoax. Tawana Brawley fabricated her claims to avoid punishment for staying out late. 
There is no evidence of her being kidnapped and zero forensic evidence of any kind of sexual attack. I have not deceived my family, my advisors, and most of all, my people. Oh. The accused were completely exonerated, and Tawana Brawley's attorneys lost their license to practice law. In and around the area of America, civil rights has been seriously damaged. Uh, I think that uh, Maddox and Mason, uh, two of the most uh, cynically evil characters to have ever operated or pretend to operate under the Civil Rights Banner. Uh, the Reverend Sharpton has done some good things in the past. I feel very bad for him that he allowed himself to be so deeply involved in the fraud. No justice! No justice! No justice! The public has been had. I mean, he did it good. I mean, David had. David had. That's a lot of crap. Now, look, brother, That's you have your crap. time. That's a lot of crap. Brother, and I got brother, no, I got no, hold no. I got it. No, hold no. I got it. Sharpton and people like him are known historically for constantly, constantly uh, trying to uh, play on our differences rather than our commonalities. Hit it, hit it, hit it. The Reverend Al Sharpton is now accused of not paying taxes and stealing $250,000 from a charity group. In Manhattan Supreme Court, Reverend Sharpton was formally accused of taking in more than a quarter million dollars for his national youth movement. The money allegedly was donated over a three-year period to support youth programs, but State Attorney General Robert Abrams says lots of that cash went into Al Sharpton's pocket. Yeah, so many charges that Dr. King has, same charges gone. Huh? Where's all of the mob money? Where's the tickets go? is manipulated and people like Al Sharpton, opportunists, blood-sucking opportunists, are the ones who do it. I was not and am not a rat. Al Sharpton was a cocaine dealing wannabe thug, you know, and he flipped over to the FBI only to save his own ass. Mm -hmm. and, and, and now that the cat is out of the bag, or, or the rat is out of the bag, I guess you could say, he has taken this position where he is publicly portraying him, himself as, as some sort of Elliot Ness. Look how he's rewarded. This guy uh, has been rewarded big time, and on top of that, is, is, is uh, shown as being, quote, a leader. He's a misleader. For longtime observers of Al Sharpton's checkered past and criminal activities, it remains a mystery that he is still a prominent figure in the national spotlight. One has to wonder if he ever fully escaped the grip of the FBI or if he became an agent provocateur for the globalist. After all, he has secured his position as an antagonist and race baiter for the Obama administration. Nice try, but we got you. Thanks so much for tuning into the show tonight. Y'all have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here Monday at 7 p.m. Central. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. And now you can protect yourself from corrupt cops with the InfoWars dash cam. It's your car's black box that records all that the driver sees and hears. And introducing the Block It Pocket. It renders your phone undetectable while protecting your private data and your health. Or take back your privacy and protect your personal information by getting your very own detractor cell phone pouch. So get incredibly high quality freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com.
You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcode with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.